starting tomorrow, I'm going to be teaching a class to men preparing to be deacons. And to be honest, I'm terrified. I'm not scared of teaching because I've taught physics and engineering at the college level, and I get up here like this and give homilies, so that's not really scary. What scares me is the topic. I'll be teaching Christology. That is the study of Jesus Christ. Because when you teach physics, you know, you know, you don't want to get your facts wrong, since then you'll create this group of people who go off and mess up their calculations in other classes. But when you teach about Jesus, well, messing up the facts might have greater consequences, maybe eternal ones. So teaching this course is going to be a huge responsibility, and you might imagine that, how tough that would be to teach all about Jesus. So what about you? Could you explain who Jesus is? More importantly, in your heart, who do you believe that Jesus is? How does your understanding of Jesus change how you experience life? As if to help us answer those questions, we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration today when Jesus reveals his divinity to his closest co-workers. So let's use today's readings to answer those questions. First, who do you say Jesus is? Second, in your heart, who do you believe Jesus is? And third, how is your life different because of Jesus? So first, who do you say Jesus is? There are so many things we could list in answer to this question. And in fact, I'll spend three hours each class for the next eight weeks saying who Jesus is. In the chapter just before our gospel reading today, Jesus asked that question to the apostles. Who do you say that I am? And Peter gave his famous and beautiful reply, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Jesus asked that question, it must be important. What's your answer? Some correct answers would be, he is the son of God. He is God. He is our Lord. He is our savior. He is my friend. He is the one who paid the price of my sins. He is my teacher. And we could go on and on. What could you add to that list? Think about it. I would guess for all of us, the answer would change depending on who and where you were asked. If Father Jesse asked you after Mass, who do you say Jesus is? How different, from, from how different is your answer there from if your boss or your teacher asked, who do you say Jesus is? or one of your coworkers, or a fellow student? How is it different from your atheist friend who asks, who do you say Jesus is? No matter how different your answers would be, I hope they're all modeled similarly to what St. Peter said in the second reading. And that is, we do not follow myths. Jesus Christ has power. We have witnessed his majesty. God has declared Jesus to be his beloved son. Who do you say that Jesus is? Now, as flawed human beings, sometimes what comes out of our mouths and what resides in our hearts are different. So no no matter what we say about Jesus, we also need to ask a second question. In your heart, who do you believe Jesus is? Continuing with the second reading, we hear St. Peter say that his message of Christ is prophetic and altogether reliable. He tells us that in response to the message, we should be attentive to it until the dawn of the morning star rising in our hearts. Do the words you speak about Jesus rise powerfully in your heart? I'll admit for myself that it's easy for the words of my belief to become dry from repetition, but we have got to fight against that. And I don't mean to say that we always have to have this warm, fuzzy feeling about our beliefs, because feelings can come and go. What it means is we need to be aware of the power of belief in Jesus Christ. The first reading is a good place to reflect on that power. We see this image of God the Father. Let's listen to the words one more time. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him. 
and myriads upon myriads attended him. God our Father is kind of a big deal. And then the, second, then the reading shifts to describing Jesus. One, like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven, received dominion, glory, and kingship. Now those are all descriptions of glorious power. In your heart, is that the power you believe that Jesus has? In today's gospel, just after Peter had said Jesus was the Son of God, Peter, James, and John go up a mountain to see, to see Jesus become as bright as the sun and start talking to Old Testament heroes, Moses and Elijah. What a glorious sight it must have been. However, not nearly as glorious as what came next, the voice of God the Father, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The three friends of Jesus dropped to the ground and were entirely frightened. Imagine being there in that moment, seeing Jesus glow, seeing Old Testament legends, hearing the voice of God. It makes me wonder, did they see that throne of fire? Did the words of God come forth like a surging stream of fire? I can guarantee that their words of praise for Jesus at that point matched what they believed in their hearts that day. What about, what about you? Who is Jesus in your heart? So you can say who Jesus is, and you need to ensure Jesus is fully present in your heart. We also need to consider how is your life different because of Jesus? The image of this all-powerful God sitting on a throne of fire was written to the Jewish people at a time of oppression when the Greeks squashed their religion and squashed their culture. Knowing that their God was stronger than all others gave them hope for the future. Does, if you, does your knowledge of Jesus give you hope? We have family fears. We have personal fears. School starts next week. What fears do you have associated with that? Does your knowledge of Jesus give you hope? In the gospel, Peter took a nice stroll up a mountain with Jesus, and when Jesus was transfigured, Peter wanted to put up three tents. Now, a couple observations of Peter's desire to put up three tents. First, that means Peter was thrilled at what was happening and wanted it to continue. Second, they took a walk up the mountain. It didn't say anything about a hike and backpacking with tents. Peter didn't carry tents with them. This would have been a big effort to build those tents for those three. Are you excited about Jesus in your heart? Do you want that to continue? Do you want it to continue so much that you're willing to invest work into it? Now, another point, Peter, James, and John heard the words, listen to him. Do you listen to Jesus? You're here at Mass, so that's certainly, you're certainly listening to him in that regard. However, we all also fall short. Listening to Jesus is something we should ponder more. In fact, Father Jesse, our pastor, has shared a letter in the bulletin on the idea of listening more to our Lord. And I'd encourage you to get a bulletin after Mass and spend time with Father Jesse's letter. So for the next several weeks, I'll be stressed out as I study and prepare to teach a class on Jesus. And I'll consider it a failure if I only fill their heads with facts about him. I hope what they learn changes their hearts, and I hope what they learn changes what they do in their everyday lives. What if we all decided to teach a class, to teach it to ourselves? In fact, let's make that the challenge for this week. Teach yourself a class, and the topic, of course, is Jesus. Start by reading the letter from Father Jesse in the bulletin, Meditate more on today's readings. Your goal for the class is to work on your heart to more fully love our Lord Jesus Christ. And let your new knowledge and your increased love change every day of your life. St. Anthony of Padua.